And we are back with the breakfast. Let's delve into the next conversation. Now, over time, there's been a lot of argument as to the involvement or the impact of ethnicity and religion on our elections. But really, do these factors uh, play out during the elections? And do they influence you know, the political terrain uh, for Nigeria? It's a conversation we'll be delving into uh, as in no time. We have Tunde Kolawole who will be joining us this morning. I mean, Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Thanks for having me. All right, then. Now, just a bit of a background to this uh, discussion we'll be having. A recent poll conducted by SBM Intelligence in partnership with Enough is Enough Nigeria has shed light on the impact of ethnicity and religion on Nigerian voter turnout. Now, the poll gathered data from 11,534 respondents across the country, uh, probing into the voting intentions and preference in the upcoming uh, presidential and parliamentary elections on Saturday, the 25th of February, 2023. The survey highlighted the impact of ethnic and religious division or divide on voter turnout with respondents in some region, indicating that these factors would play a significant role in their decision to participate in the election. Now, according to poll result, many respondents cited ethnic and religious factors as key determinants of their voting decision. Uh, to make sense of all of this, analyze these findings ahead of the forthcoming election is Tunde Kolawale, who's a legal practitioner right here in Lagos. Uh, Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Tunde, do you agree with uh, the SBM? Yes, I, I would say I do. Even though when you look at the Nigerian constitution, uh, it stands that um, the mixing of uh, religion with uh, politics. And the constitution says that um, nobody shall be discriminated against on the basis of the religion or ethnicity or disability. But the reality of life is that uh, it's been difficult for women then to take religion, to take ethnicity out of their political beliefs, out of their political practices out of their voting patterns. And unfortunately, it is not peculiar to Nigeria alone. Even the advanced democracy society that in good faith are well educated and have been practicing democracy for years, you still find out that religion and ethnicity in one way or the other influences their political beliefs and the way and manner in which they vote. I give you an example. In the country like Germany, you even have political parties that are formed on the basis of a religion. Say, for example, the Christian Democratic Union in Germany. Also, when you go to a place like uh, Spain, you find out that the Catalans, who are a kind of a tribe in Italy, who usually vote for a political party that uh, the Catalan people have formed. And even use that as a basis for decision to create another state, to create another country in a place like uh, Spain. Also, when you look at the Arab world, you find out the Shi, the Shai, and some of these other religious, Islamic religious um, um, uh, denominations tend to vote for political parties that spring up from their religious uh, beliefs. As homogeneous as a country like Iran is in terms of religion. But they still have the challenges of some people saying they are shy, some saying they are shy, and no manners of, um, of uh, religious activities and all that. So, the findings of that uh, research uh, is not far fetched. Here in Nigeria, times without number, especially the Yoruba people, the most conservative. They hardly want to vote for somebody who comes outside the ethnic um, uh, base or uh, 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 culture. That is the reason you find out all the time. I want to play this politics. 
the Yorubas had always stood uh, solidly behind them. Also in the northern part of the country, you find out that the Arewa Consultative Forum have always voted and asked their people to vote for a political party that has a full and one announcer man as his presidential and then as his governorship uh, uh, candidate. Religion is also a very potent weapon in the northern part of the country. In fact, sometimes when the election remains about 24 hours, on the Friday, for example, the Islamic clerics, the Muslims, the Imams in some of those churches who give a directive as regards the religious, uh, I mean, the political parties that the Muslims in the north or for the adherents in the, in the north to vote for. So it's a very, very potent uh, weapon. And it's not peculiar to Nigeria. In a place like England, a Anglican church has a very significant influence as regards the political processes that take place in those places. We cannot wish it away. And the funny aspect of it is that uh, as educated as some of these people become, you will uh, think that when people become well educated, when they become cosmopolitan, when they are traveled far and wide, they should be shedding their ethnic toga, they should be shedding their religious toga. But education, cosmopolitan, cosmopolitanism, and what happened? And ethnicity to the color of uh, political leaning. Today, so, I mean, this report uh, of findings saying that uh, the 2023 elections would have or will witness a lot of voter turnout as compared to previous years. And you have agreed uh, that uh, these issues would always shape the elections. But let's cast our minds back to the 1993 elections where it wasn't a problem because it was a Muslim Muslim ticket. Why is that different? I mean... What exactly? How come religion and ethnicity did not play, you know, or have a huge role to play in that election? And why would the 2023 election be uh, decided by religion and ethnicity? Well, uh, it is not totally true that uh, religion has nothing to do with the 1993 election. Uh, in spite of the fact that a Muslim Muslim speaker was able to win uh, the presidency, the circumstances of 1993 is totally different from what we are experiencing in 2023. You and I will know Abiola was a cosmopolitan person, highly charismatic, he was a philanthropist, and then half wife from the different parts of the country. Everywhere he goes, in Nigeria, it was like a hope for him. He was such a very charismatic and colorful political leader. And then his vice president, Babaka Nakingite, was also somebody of that uh, uh, nature and status. The wife was one in the Tikingibe, and then also, because he's been in politics for a long time, he's made friends from across uh, the country. So because of their own charisma, it was not too difficult to really tell the Muslim ticket, the Muslim Muslim ticket to the average Nigerian person in 1993. But you and I will know that a lot of water has passed under the bridge since 1993. For example, there was no Boko Haram in 1993. For example, issues, mundane issues, like wearing of the job and not wearing of the job was it an issue in, in, in before nineteen ninety three. Furthermore, the Christian militancy that we begin to see all over the country too is not as excavated as it is uh, today. So so many things have happened in Nigeria, such that our allies, rather than came their religious um, uh, beliefs or their religious dispositions and all that, they have been stoking and manipulating the fire of a religion to achieve whatever they want to achieve, either in the area of politics, or either in the area of business, 
or in their attempt to dominate people from the other regions and sectors of the Nigerian society. Religions have become a political tool in the hands of our life, which ordinarily is a very, very sad development. Uh, Tunde Kola Wale, I mean, if you, if we look at this, uh, if you look at the our democracy from the time that we say we have been practicing, the 1993 elections might just be the only elections where these issues were downplayed. And I, I really don't know if we will get the answers. <laughs> answers have been given, but you want to ask yourself, how come... Um, these issues were not even an issue because over time our elections have been shaped by this fact. On the 2023 elections, it's not going to be different, however it is. But do you also think that the dichotomy between the North and the South is also a major issue, what we classify as a rotational presidency? Do you think that that also will contribute to whether the South or the North or the ethnicity and religion becoming a factor for the 2023 election is uh, predominant? Well, there is no doubt about it. I have no doubt um, in my mind that this uh, regional dichotomy also will have a role to play in uh, the 2023 election. And like I said earlier on, Let's uh, be very, very careful. In the First Republic, religion was an issue. You had another element progressive union, and then you have uh, NCNC and some of these other different uh, political parties that, um, even though they may not see to say it openly or loudly, they still can pass for vote based on religion. Now, regionalism has become even more excavated. You know, if you, you, if you recall, it was under General Tony Apacha that Nigeria was quietly and tacitly uh, divided into six regions. North, East, North, West, and War Rapio. But And that itself arose out of a desire to pacify those who are aggrieved with the notification of the election that was conducted in 1993. And then taking into cognizance our political history. Each time I will over, for example, as to the election, the people in the southeast had never voted for him. They go with the NPNC or with whatever political party that Dr. Namda Zikwe might have established. I suspect the reason for that was partly because of the of the role that he provided my will over place only the Nigerian um, uh, civil war, and also the way and manner Dr. Azikwe was uh, shoved aside from the politics of southwest of Nigeria. Because if you look at our political history, Dr. Nandi Azikwe's political party, the NCNC, was the one that was dominated in the west, in the southwest. They were winning elections. They were having people in the legislators in the party and what happened. But when Awolo started the action group and he mobilized his people based on ethnicity and what have you, they were able to, so to say, with the apology, remove Dr. Azikwe's away from the politics of Southwest of um, in Nigeria. Um, and uh, never uh, to say Wale, this regionalism has become worse over time. Kola so, Wale. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, please. Uh, we, we don't have so much time, but I'd, I'd like to ask you this and that you share your thoughts in just a few seconds. Now, it's very obvious that this has always been an issue up until 1993. And after 1993, ethnicity and religion, according to history, still seem to play a major role. Now, uh, for 2023 elections, few days before that elections, there are also uh, statistics and research that have confirmed that people would turn out to cast their vote because of uh, these factors. My question is, should we, I mean, I mean, shouldn't we have a country outgrown all these uh, diversities that has held us bound and back since independence? No, no, we shouldn't. 
We you shouldn't have you an, outgrown it. You know, the, the way to look at that is this. Does inflation that we have in the country today, does it spare the Christian? Does it spare the Muslim? Does it spare the cultural uh, practitioners, uh, the traditionalists and all that? To the best of my knowledge, everybody has been under the hammer of inflation. Secondly, when you look at insecurity, the bantry, the kidnapping, and the lack of safety on the highway, on the railway, even in the air, has this carrying a duty to any religion? The answer is no. All of us are caught in the web of all this uh, criminality that is taking place all over the country. So if that be the case, what we should be emphasizing are those things that really unite us as a people. The things that will put food on the table of the average Nigerian person. The things that will create security for the average Nigerian person. The things that will make it possible for the average Nigerian person to live a comfortable life without having to steal, whether in the private sector or in the public sector. But it is our highlight in order to call your advantage in order to have a edge over the headlights of the other regions, who keeps stoking the fire of religion, who keeps stoking the fire of ethnicity, who keeps uh, stoking the fire of regionalism. If we as a nation are to develop and get to the destination we ought to be by now, we must begin to put aside, as the constitution has emphasized, that we should never discriminate against anybody on the basis of the religion, on the basis of the time they come from... I, I'm just saying that, that Tunde, uh, Kolawale, we, we need to go yeah. now. But uh, you yeah. say that we, we shouldn't have... I mean, you're asking yourself, why are we still grappling with the issue of religion and ethnicity in 2023? Why is that even the case? What was different in 1993? Where these factors, uh, you know, wasn't even a yardstick. But is that really the case for 2023? I mean, you want to ask another question. But in all of yeah. this... How far have we been? 1960, up until this moment, we're grappling with that. Should people not cast their vote, you know, based on, uh, it's not important wherever it is that you're from or whatever religion that you hold, but what it is that you are, who you are. Should that not be the basis that we're one entity, but it's important that you have, who is qualified to be part, I mean, to be elected to that position? Tunde, I know you have uh, your question, I mean, your response to this question, but we don't have time to get that right here. We have to go, and I hope that we can have this conversation just before the elections or after the elections. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Good morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, then. Capacity should be the benchmark for putting anybody into power. Okay. Well, why that hasn't been the case for us is what we're trying to understand. We'll be right back here to have further conversations. Please stay with us.